Hi, Flosstube. My name is Nithya, and you are at my Flosstube channel, Daybreak Stitchery. It is the end of July, which means we're doing a little catch up on cross stitch. Um, I've got tons to show you. If you enjoy cross stitch or needle arts or um, you know knitting, crochet, any 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 kind of crafty stuff, maybe you'll find something interesting here. And um, to my stitchy friends, welcome back and thank you so much for all of your interactions and comments. Um, to my videos. I really appreciate that. I love talking cross stitch with you all. I was watching, um, is it Kathleen? I think it's Kathleen who's Stitchuation Normal. I love her videos too. And in one of her older ones, she was talking about how only a stitchy friend will understand like the excitement that we feel about the things that are involved in stitching, like choosing fabric and choosing your fibers and the types of stitches you're doing and all that. So I really appreciate having you around to um, bounce ideas off of and share things with. Um, it's been a really fun adventure, this floss tube adventure of mine. Not that I'm ending it. It's just I'm putting it out there that I'm enjoying it. I hope you are, too. So it's been a very stitchy month and a very stitchy summer. And uh, I'm just going to get into it because I have so, so, so much to show you. We're going to start with FFOs because um, I have some to show you. It only took me 10 videos, 10 months to actually have an FFO to show you. And to be honest, these are pretty, they're like 95% finished, maybe 90% finished because I haven't put a, I need to put like a craft paper backing on these and I haven't done that yet. That's like the last tiny thing I have to do. Anyway, I'm going to show them to you and um, they're not in any order. I'm just grabbing them from the floor here. So this is my first one. And this is, um, you're going to recognize it, right? It's the owl. It's the big central owl motif from the 100 owls pattern by Owl Forest. And I didn't really feel like doing the whole pattern. So I just chose my favorite motif, which was this, this um, long-eared owl. Each owl is based on like owl, actual owls in nature. So they, when you get the pattern, which is a free download, which I will link below along with everything else um, I'm talking about today. Um, Anyway, when you get the pattern, you'll you'll be able to see the actual like the the name of each type of owl. So this is the long-eared owl, and I've put this in a frame. So almost everything that I'm I'm about, about to show you is um, thrift store frames. So these were from um, my local thrift store. Now is a Goodwill, and um, it was a white frame. It was a Hallmark frame, which retailed at. $17 and I got for like $2.99, I think. And then I just painted over it um, because I like darker frames. So I've got, I think I showed this in my last video, but I'll show you again. It's just this folk art acrylic paint that I get from my big craft store here at Michael's. And it's just a couple bucks for a dollar. And I can paint at least two or three frames, more than that, several frames with just one bottle. Um, this color, let me think for a minute. I think this one was navy blue. The paint color was navy blue. And I thought it went well because there are some flowers. Do you see the flowers on the vine? They're blue. So I just thought that would be like a nice kind of matchy accent color. I love this little thing. I think it looks great. It turned out good. I'm happy with it. It's like a tabletop, like a stand-up frame. So I will set it somewhere <laughs> on a bookcase or somewhere, I'm sure. Um, but that was the 100 Owls pattern by Owl Forest. It's a free pattern. Um, I think a lot of people are doing the new, the current free one, which is that Alice in Wonderland. So this was the one before that, the free pattern that they gave out before. Okay, next one that's like almost fully finished. Um, you're going to recognize this. This is Blue Velvet by Ink Circles. And I've shown this in my previous videos too. This is also a thrift store frame. Um, yeah, I didn't do anything to it. I didn't treat it or anything. It's just a black, basic black frame. I thought it, it, I didn't need anything really busy. I just wanted a simple frame because the pattern is so intricate. And I love, this is PR 075, um, the Flot Silks for You Floss. And, uh, what is this fabric? I think it's 18 count barnwood, 18 count Ada, and it's barnwood. 
so happy with that too this one i have to it doesn't have a fixture for hanging it on the wall so i've got to drill one of those in to this one so it's like like i said almost fully finished um my out my long-eared owl was on a 28 count permin linen which came in a set by um x -Ju designs on etsy and it came in a set of nine tiny pieces nine by 13 pieces and it was called the set was called spirit of autumn and it had really pretty like browns one kind of reddish and then a green and a blue um but that's kind of nice because i i'm always looking for smaller patterns to stitch so i have smaller fabrics too to go with that the um owl had what had i used on that i think i'd used the the owl forest threads on that one and then for blue velvet like i said silks for you okay this one is old friends by hello from liz matthews and uh oh gosh what's it on oh this is on um a linen by what i thought was the primitive hair but it's not i think it's nikki's creations and i'd gotten this linen from abby um top knot stitcher and i used dmc 336 which is navy blue you can kind of see that there i stitched it three strands over two so it's got a real thick looking stitch and i definitely need to put a backing in this one because i have a lot of linen just kind of hanging out back there this one has a fixture to hang up so as soon as i put the backing on it i'll be able to hang it up but that turned out pretty good too this is also a thrift store frame so i'm pretty cheap when it comes to thrift store frames i won't spend more than like five bucks so i don't know what i spent on this one i removed the backing so i don't have the price tag on it um but i also painted over this one and this the color of this the acrylic paint color is midnight which is just a little bit darker than their navy blue one so happy with that one too um, this was the one I was kind of scared to, actually on all of these, I've gotten better, although it's not perfect, um, gotten better at tacking my fabric, my stitched fabric onto foam board, which is a little bit scary, but it's not too bad. I've had to tack things on, like this was actually really easy to tack on. I just used a ruler. Um, no, that's not at all what I did. I, I've, what I've been doing is I've been using like the cardboard backing that comes with the thrift store frames. And I've been using that, putting that on the foam board and using that to measure around like how big my board needs to be. And then I'll just cut, sometimes I'll cut it a tiny bit shorter on the, on um, each side. And then I, I'm able to pin down the fabric from that. I've mostly been eyeballing my fabric to try to center it. Um, and I think it's okay. It looks pretty centered, I think. Um, I don't have, I know people use like I, the videos I saw about finishing projects, people had used like a clear plastic square to help measure like the center of things and pin down the center. I haven't really been doing that. Um, it's been working okay. So I'm just going to keep going with that. Um, uh, this is another almost fully finished object. So this is Quaker Wreath by Stone Street Stitchworks. And this was one of the projects I had shown you in my former video, previous videos, um, because I was trying to stitch projects with my monthly thread club um, flosses that were coming from Color and Cotton. I wanted to try to like use them up as they came in. Um, so this is this was April's colors, I think. And this Quaker pattern was just perfect for that. And it, since the colors were so bright and kind of pinky orange, I thought I would use, I have one bottle of this kind of apricot color paint that I've never used because I, I prefer darker frames. But I think it actually looks okay, even though it's like kind of Sometimes when I look at it, I feel like, ooh, it's like kind of a little bit on the tacky side, but it's also so shockingly bright that maybe it's just, it's good for me to try something different. So uh, I think it's okay. This is on a lilac 32 count linen and I stitched with three strands over two. So it's like another kind of thick, really thick coverage of it. So I love that one. This one has a fixture on it. So it's all ready to go up on the wall as soon as I back it, put the backing on it. This one I, I worry, I got a little worried about. Okay, so some of these thrift store frames are just kind of mass produced frames. And some of them you can tell were from pieces that were professionally finished. 
And those frames are tend to be more beautiful. They have like more details on them, um, but they're also a little bit harder to repurpose because during the professional framing, like the staples that they use to put the original pieces in there, they're really hard to either remove or like bend up to get out of the way to stick your piece in there. So this one, it went okay. I was able to use it like the flat, a flathead screwdriver and bend up all the staples. Um, but I do think, I, I can't see it now, but I thought I felt my linen ripping a little bit as it pushed, cause it got, it snagged on one of the staples. Now I don't see, I don't remember where it happened, but anyway, looks okay. So I think we're going to go with that. Okay. Um, this one isn't, I have one that's not a cross stitch, but I framed it. So I'm going to show it to you. And this is what I actually spent a little money on a frame for. So can you see that? Okay. There's a little bit of a glare on it. Um, this is a watercolor that I did of a little forest and it was a, it was a um, little project. I used a tutorial on YouTube called, it was from Ahmed Art. I'll link it below if any of you like play with watercolor at all. Um, I like this one. I like how it play. It was an exercise on playing with light. So you use just one color. It was one color ink. And um, if you dilute the ink with a lot of water, it's really, really lightly colored. So that's what you use. You paint all the light colored parts first. And then you add a bit more ink and it gets a little bit darker. So then you paint the slightly darker trees and over that. And then you just keep adding ink and keep adding layers. So it's kind of a fun project. And I like how dark it looks. It looks kind of spooky, but also maybe like, I don't know. I don't know what, I just like it. And um, this frame came from Rustic, Rustic Decor, I think. Let me look at it. Yeah, Rustic Decor Frames on Etsy. To be honest, you could, on Etsy, you could just search for Rustic Frames and lots of people make these like barn wood frames. Um, but I picked this one, I picked Rustic Decor Frames because they're from Oklahoma City and um, Steve, my partner's family's from Oklahoma City. So I just thought it'd be cool to have something with like that city connection, just like our family has. So anyway, that was, and I was really happy with it. They sent, it's not glass. It's, um, what's the material? Plexiglass, which is like plastic basically, um, which is fine by me. I, I prefer framing or hanging up stuff that's a little bit lighter. So um, even on my cross stitch finishes here, I, I didn't put glass over them. I'm going to try that. So we'll just see how that works out. Okay. I have one more um, FFO fully finished object to show you. And this one really is fully finished. I'm not going to do anything else with it. Look at this little friend. Um, this is Basket of Cherries and it's by Blackbird Designs. And um, I wanted to join in with all the kind of stitchy tributes for Blackbird, for um, Barb Adams at Blackbird Designs. And I actually had this pattern in my stash. It was partly kitted up. So I had originally seen it on um, Christopher, who is, he, his floss tube channel is Skog Knits. And his Instagram um, name is Sparkling Cherry Sparkle. And he had been working on this, this very same basket of cherries. And I just thought it was so cute. And I don't usually stitch this style of pattern, um, but I thought, well, it is kind of charming. It's, you know, the bird with the worm and then these little cherries. And I liked all the reds. So I had um, partly kitted it up from one, two, three stitch, partly because it called for 10 colors. Um, all gentle art threads, which I had never used before. Um, but one, two, three stitch only had four of the colors in stock. So I had, I had picked up those four and the pattern and then, um, I had never stitched it because I'd never gone back to like rekit it or anything. So then when, you know, everyone was talking about Barb this month and Blackbird Designs, I just thought, well, maybe I'd like to stitch something and um, experience what it's like to stitch a Blackbird Designs pattern. So I searched for patterns on one, two, three, two, three stitch. And it's like, oh yeah, I, I do have, I have one already that I can work on and I've been wanting to do it. So I just, um, they provide DMC conversions on their patterns. So I just, um, I didn't get any more gentle art. I just used DMC for the rest of it. 
So um, there are two colors on here that I just fell in love with. And let me see if I can point them out to you. One is this medium red right here at the bottom of this top cherry here. And it's um, Ruby Slipper by Gentle Art. And then the other is the outline on these leaves right here. And what's it called? It's Burlap by Gentle Art. It's like a sh shiny yellow green kind of with tinge of brown in there too. So both of those I had, um, it didn't, this didn't take very much. Do I have a picture of the pattern? Hang on, I wanna see. Yeah, I do. So this is the pattern. And um, the stitch count on it is only 65 by 65. It's really small. So you don't need a full skein of any of the colors. You're just basically using a few strands. So the um, those two colors that I liked, the Ruby Slipper and the Burlap, um, you're going to see them again because I have a new start. I have a, tons of new starts again. Um, one of the new starts for this month, I, I reused or I used up the rest of that. So um yeah, so I really enjoyed this. I feel really grateful for for um, and appreciative to Blackbird Designs for this pattern because it took me out of my comfort zone um, with stitching because I usually stitch monochromatic patterns. This had color changes in it, which I don't do a whole lot of. Um, so that was, it was um, interesting to try. And then I don't know if you're seeing them, but if you look at the basket, there are Smyrna crosses on that. These little um, X's that are decorating the basket. That's my first try at Smyrna crosses. I think it's my first try. Um, and it was a little bit strange on Ada. I think most people do it on linen. Um, a Smyrna cross is basically an X and then a plus sign over it. Um, and then you don't use just one square. You use a grid of nine squares. So like you're, it's a big X over nine squares and then a big plus sign over the same nine squares. Um, so the weird part about that is that Ada, you have to kind of force your needle through like, Ada kind of looks like that. And the holes are here, 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 here. So you have to kind of force your needle through like that. You can see the two threads, but they're usually together. So you have to force it through a little bit, but it was fine. It wasn't hard to do. It worked out just fine. This thing is a, I, I couldn't tell you what this actually is in terms of like an object, but I found this at the thrift store too. And it actually has corks on the back. Somebody stuck corks into it. So it's probably like a tray or something. I don't really know. When I go to the thrift store, I always like run to the frames and look at what frames are there. And then I've also been looking at just like the wood household items because I, I don't know, you can find stuff like this where you can, all I did was I, I, um, tacked my project down to foam board and then I stuck it in there and it stays. I haven't glued it down or anything. If I use like a knife or something, I can pry it out and it just comes out. Um, so if I ever want to switch it out, I could switch this out. Um, so that was exciting. That was an exciting finish. And I do feel, um, I do feel grateful. I, I think it's, I think it's really neat that we have these very creative people who come up with these amazing designs for us to try out and um, push us to try new things with our <clears throat> with our craft. It's cool. This is going to probably go on a bookshelf or something because it's it's very wide. See how wide it is? So it'll just stand. It'll be able to stand up. Okay. So those are fully finished objects. I pushed myself to try to frame some things this time around. So um, I and I. Oh, a lot of thanks to you too, like Floss Tube community and viewers, fellow stitchers, because knowing that I want to show you items at the end of each month kind of pushes me to finish some things too. Okay. Um, oh, back, one more thing about Blackbird Designs, but I haven't seen it yet. I was watching, is it Kyle, I think, who's stitching in sound? I was watching one of his recent, probably like a very recent video, and he had talked about how there are a couple of people who've done tributes to Blackbird Designs. I think one is Saltbox Stitcher, maybe. You all are going to know because you've you've been on Floss Tube longer than I have. But I, th I thought that might be kind of interesting. You know, when I was looking at 123 Stitch for Blackbird Designs patterns, they're still not really my style. I don't know if I'll run to stitch more. I'm going to have to think about it. Um, but I did enjoy stitching this one. And um, I like the one, is it, 
Yeah, it's Caroline at Off the Grid Needle Arts. She's got she's doing like a seasonal one. It's got four panels, one for each season, and then it's got these kind of black crows on it. It looks I, I like that one. I don't know. I don't run to those patterns, but um, I'll be a little bit more curious about them, I think. And I'll pay closer attention when I look at them now because I know that they include specialty stitches. It'll be kind of a, an interesting thing to look out for. Okay. I have um, one finish that is not fully finished. And I know this is one you're going to be, um, well, some of you <laughs> might be excited to see because I know you've been following its progress for some time. So this is an excerpt from Amanda Gorman's poem, The Hill We Climb. And um, let me get it up a little bit closer to you. And I finished it. So I'm going to try to read it off the screen here. If we're to live up to our own time, then victory won't lie in the blade, but in all the bridges we've made. That is the promise to Glade, the hill we climb, if only we dare it. And I wanted to stitch the quote. That poem is long and beautiful. And I have the little book of it that she published in book form. And like every page you open to has something just so inspirational in that poem. And um, so, but I wanted to stitch the the lines that led up to the title of the poem, which is The Hill We Climb. And this was using, oh gosh, I should have written it down. Now I'm going to forget. I bought three font cross-stitch patterns on Etsy. And um, one is Christy patterns. I think that's this like cursive font that I used in We and in Bridges and in Victory. I think that's one from Christy patterns. I'll find it. I'll link it below like with everything else. Um... One was Lifted Spirit, and I can't remember the last one. I feel terrible. But anyway, I will find them, and I'll look them up, and I'll, um, I'll put them. I'll link them so you can find them. So um, I did sort of use graph paper to kind of lay out where I wanted parts of the quotes to be. But once I got down to, like, at the very bottom, like I had not charted out to Glade. I just knew there would be room above We Climb, so I knew I'd put it there. And then I knew I'd have room at the bottom um, for the If Only We Dare It. I just needed to use a small font for that. So I did a little bit of planning, but not a whole lot. Um, and I think you could, if you have a quote you want to stitch, I don't think you'd have to plot it out beforehand. I think if you're just, if you're okay with it kind of, being a little bit all over the place, you could make it work. I finished it and then I had these like weird gaps. So I had a gap here, I had a space here, and then I had this. So I used my new color that I just love so much and I wanna do something with it. It's DMC 939. It's like a very dark navy blue. I love that color. It's, it's, it's just so pretty. And uh, so I tried to add just some little kind of features, just fill up that space and to contrast with the bright colors. So I put in this like little vine here. I was going for little hills here, but it I don't know what it looks like now. It looks kind of weird. So I'm not really sure how I feel about that yet. Glade to glade means you like, um, you make something shine. You make something bright. That that's that. So when she says that is the promise to glade, we're gonna make it bright or we're gonna make it shine. And I should have thought more about that maybe before stitching something here. I don't know what I could have stitched to represent that. But anyway, it's fine. It filled up the space. And then down here, I have a little hill with a sun. So that's what it is. This is PR142 from Silks For You, which is it transitions from like aqua to purple to blue, royal blue very pretty. I want to find something else now to do with that one because I have more. I had a whole hank from over Christmas when I bought it. So um, and this barely used any because I'm stitching. This is 28 count Wichelt linen and I stitched it one over one teeny tiny. So um, I have a lot of this fabric to use, but tell you what, Wichelt linen is not for me. It is. It's very pretty, um, but it's so, so slippery and I stitch in hand. So like I would roll it up. I usually roll up my project. That's why they all curl at the bottom like this. I roll it up to the part where I'm stitching and then I just hold that rolled part. That's what I hold on to. And this would just unroll like on its own all the time because it's just so, so slippery. So I have another Wichelt linen too. I started something else on it. I don't know. They're not for me. 
I was glad to, fi you know, finish this up. I wanted to use a yellow, um, kind of like a bright, something bright um, to stitch on though. And it, I think it worked. The color is fine. I'm happy with it. So now I don't have a frame for this yet. Um, I'm not in a rush to frame it. I want to find just the right frame. It'll be a black frame, I think, or another navy blue, like a dark blue um, that I'll paint over. So I'll just wait. I would like to find something decorative. It, it, it'll fit in a four by six frame just barely, or I could cut a little bit around it and mat it onto something, like put it on something and then have a little bit of mat around it. Um, and frame it in something a little bit larger. But I think probably I'll just use a four by six, but I was thinking I'd want like a wide frame maybe around it. I'm not really sure. When I find it, I'll find it. So that's um, the hill we climb. I just made it up. I, I don't have a chart or anything. I don't, I won't be planning a chart for it or anything because it's not my, it's all fonts that I bought. They're other people's patterns. So I can't chart it up or sell it or anything. Know what I mean? I encourage you to, um, support font designers and stitch your own quotes that you that are meaningful to you. Um, yeah, that was a, a worthwhile experience. I think a good experience, a good stitching experience. Okay, it we're 25 minutes in and we haven't started whips or new starts yet. So let's just get on with that one. Okay, so uh, I'm going to talk about some works in progress, some whips and um, I have quite a few because I restarted a whole bunch, as I do. So let me show you. Um, this was one that I had shown you last month, actually. I had started it. You're going to recognize it. It's the Modern Folk Embroidery um, 2021 Stitch Along. It's the new, the current year Stitch Along. And it's called Fruits of Plenty. And everyone recognizes this pattern because of this beautiful um, negative stitching here. And I, I'm really enjoying stitching on that. It's so satisfying. Um, I'm using Pattern Keeper, which is helping a lot because I can, on Pattern Keeper, I can mm. zoom it in to just like, let's say a 30 stitch grid or maybe 40 stitch grid. And I can um, mark off what I'm doing. So you don't even realize it. And then all of a sudden, you know, like an hour later, you kind of step back and you look and you're like, wow, I've done like this whole thing here. So yeah. Um, I'm enjoying this one a lot. It's, I don't know if you'll catch the colors on my video. Let me try to hold it up a little differently and see. But the fill, that filled in part is DMC 154. It's, mm, what is that one? It's very dark grape is the official color, but it's very like, it's a purple, purple burgundy wine kind of color. And then the um, contrast color, like you see on the little squirrel here is DMC 4000. It's uh, gray and brown variegated. I'm loving it. The fabric is 28 count vintage country mocha. It's a linen. And uh, I really like, I like the colors. I'm using three strands over two. So the stitches are really, really big. I'll show you like that. So that's, I think, I'm gonna have to check, but I think this might be the halfway point. So like this distance from here to here is half. So now it'll go out to like here probably if, I'm, if we're looking at that correctly. There's a really funny, um, do you all know Rose Matafeo? She's a comedian from New Zealand. I think she lives in the UK now, but we were watching a comedy special of hers and she had this funny bit. How did it go? Well, I thought, okay, so I thought of it because I was, the other day I was looking at this and trying to figure out like, ooh, is this fabric going to be big enough for the whole thing? Because here's what I have. And so there's this panel here. I've done a little bit of January here. This part here is June. And then this part here is um, right here is January. So I was using my hand to try to, to try to measure out, okay, here's, or no, this is April. Sorry, not June. So like January is up here. Okay, that's going to be okay. And then there's another row here and then another row here. So like, I think based on the measure of my hand, um, it'll fit. <laughs> All the parts will fit. Cause it's like January, February goes in the middle of March. And then this row down here is April, May, June. And then it'll be the next six months below. But Rose Matafeo has a really funny bit in her comedy, latest comedy special. And it's something like she's in her late twenties and she's talking about how she'd like to grow into a more confident woman. And she, it was something like, I'd like to have the confidence of those women who can like, 
use their hands to measure something that's this wide and then have the confidence to like walk across the room with your hands like that and trust that it's going to like hold, be the same measurement. And so I was thinking of that when I was measuring here, I was like, yes, I have the confidence of an older woman. I can use my hands and measure this. She's so funny. Anyway, um, modern folk embroidery um, fruits of plenty. So I'm taking my own time with it. I am clearly not going to catch up. Um, but that's okay. I can live with that. I did, I did, um, with that one and with forests of Sumatra, which I'll show you in a minute, I tried to 25, seven them, but I only made it like a week because I just have so many, you know me, I've, if, well, if you've been watching, you know me, I just have so many projects. I've got like probably, I'm probably up to like 70 projects now, although I have some finishes. I, I have a ton of projects. And so I, I like to just have a library to choose from. It's my thing. You know, I have a student who has like a hundred pairs of sneakers. I'm like, that's a lot of sneakers. That's not really my thing. My thing is like a lot of cross stitch projects. So I know it's not easy to understand, but it's, that's what it is. It's just what it is. Um, okay. So next work in progress is, um, by Vienberg designs and it's, Patchwork Quakers, the States version. So the it's blues and reds. Um, one could consider this a patriotic stitch. I'm adapting mine a little bit because what I'm doing is every time I pull this out to stitch before I stitch on it, I'm choosing some like a book to read from someone who I feel like represent like a voice of America for the America that we want it to be today, like an inclusive America, diverse voices. So um, I've read from like ta Coates before and Mary Frances Berry. And this time I read an extraordinary book and I'm going to try not to, I don't know if I'm going to get teary eyed when I said, here's the full pattern, by the way. Um, Patchwork Quakers by Vianberg Designs. There's different ones of these, like um, Shiloh from Cross Stitch MD is doing one. Is it like a garden version? I don't know. There are like four or five versions of these Quakers, each with a different theme. Um, so this is the States one. Um, let me give you the info. It's 25 count stormy night. You see how it's a little bit variegated. I don't know if you're catching that. And I'm using DMC. It's the called for DMC. There are like six, five or six DMC colors. The book that I'm reading, do you know this book or have you been reading about this in July? All that she carried and it's by Tia Miles. Tia Miles is a, um, a historian. That's her picture. Um, she works at both Radcliffe University and ha Harvard. And this book I found out about when Steve forwarded an article to me about it. I'll try to link that article below if you want to read it. Okay. So what's the book about? It's a nonfiction book. And um, it is the story of, it's many stories, but it started with a woman in 1852 a woman named Rose. She was a slave. And in 1852, her um, slave owner died. And all of the slaves were being sold off. And it's very so hard to talk about it. And um, one of the like, of many horrible practices, right? One of the most horrible practices was that they would separate families, right? They would sell off like, children would be sold off to different families. They would, it was one of many kind of dehumanizing practices, separate family separations. So um, Rose knew she had a nine year old daughter named Ashley and she knew that Ashley was going to be sold off. So she gathered whatever she could. She gathered like a few pecans. She cut off like a um, braid of her hair and then she grabbed a dress and she put him into this cotton sack. And she gave it, I might cry. She gave it to her daughter. She gave it to her daughter, Ashley. And she said, this sack is also going to be filled with my love. And she gave it to her. Sorry, you all. I knew I practiced it like three times. I knew I was going to cry. It's so emotional. And, um, <clears throat> Ashley, so Ashley had the sack, a cotton sack. I'll, I'll show you a picture of it if I can find it. Ashley passed it to her daughter and her daughter passed it to her daughter. So this is now Rose's 
not granddaughter, but great granddaughter, Ruth. And Ruth in 1921 still had that sack and the story had been passed on. And so she embroidered, here's a picture. She basically embroidered in just a few statements, she embroidered the story of the sack. She basically says, my great-grandmother Rose gave this to my grandmother Ashley. Here's what she put in it and here's what she said. And um, I now I'm the great granddaughter of this woman and I'm embroidering. She embroidered her name and the date on it. And it's such an extraordinary story. And it's also like so moving that somebody um, it's a story about families. It's a story about legacy. It's a sad story. Um, it's also like kind of amazing that now this sack exists. I think it's at the Smithsonian now. And so Tia Miles She's written this book um, to do a lot of things. She's retracing the path of that sack because it ended up like in a flea market somewhere that somebody found it and donated it to this plantation museum in South Carolina. And then, then it's some, you know, it's, it's path ended up at the Smithsonian. So she's kind of retracing the path and also trying to find documentation of all these people. Um, but it's also really interesting because she talks about how like, Needle arts, arts and crafts, quilting, like all of these things have to be part of um, like our black, like the our country's black history. Basically, you can't only rely on documents to tell, to get information about black history. Like all of these people who crafted and made things, they're part of, they create the history too. They docu, they're the documenters of history too. So it's very um, moving book. It's I'm only two chapters in so far, and it's um, she's talking a lot about the family history. Um, but Tia Miles, if any of you decide to read this, will you let me know? Because I'd love to know what you think of it too while you read it. I can't, um, I don't read it in, like I'm not pouring through it because it's just so much to think about and mull over. Um, but if you're doing, if any of you are stitching on, um, you know, Representation Matter Cell or, um, Black History 365, Sal, or anything, anything um, Black History related. I think it's like we're needle artists too now. And I think it's such a moving connection for us to think about. So all that she carried, I recommend it. And let me know if you're reading it or want to read it, let me know. Who you all, that was, that's what it, that's what um, recognizing our history is part of that, right? We have to deal with the all of the hard stuff that happened. I forgot my tissues too. I had <laughs> stacked a pile of tissues upstairs. Steve was like, Steve was up there. He's like, what's going on? You're, this is all your floss tube stuff. And there's a stack of tissues there. I said, I'm going to need it today. Okay. So, um, works in progress. So this is an old one from my very first video. And, um, this is called the Huga Forest maybe sampler. I don't remember who got forest. I think it's called. And, uh, I'll put the information below because I don't remember who designed this, but it's a Scandinavian folk art pattern. And I think before I like the part I worked on this month was all this part up here. So I fit, I got to the end. This is the end of it here. And now I have to get to the other end here. It's a lot of stitching because basically like there's a lot of bits that need to be filled in. Um, like this motif here took me a while. It doesn't look very big, but all of that is filled in. So it just takes longer than I thought. I was trying to see if I could finish it because I finished, um, if you were watching my older vid videos, that ornament sampler. Um... That was my two by two stitch art. It was like a purple, that DMC 550, that bright purple sam um, ornamental square thing. Um, that was an old whip too. So I thought, oh, wouldn't it be cool if I could finish one more old whip, but I couldn't, I couldn't finish it. It was too much to do, but I'm glad I pulled it out to work on it. I like the colors. The pattern calls for a red, a blue, a gray, and a white. I think that's what it is. Um, yeah, so it's, it's in progress. Okay. I'm going to pause just for a second, you all. Oh, no. I don't think I'll be able to pause. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. I was going to grab a tissue, but... Well, maybe I'm going to pause and be right back, okay? Okay. Thanks, y'all. 
So um, I can show you a little bit of progress on Forests of Sumatra. That's this pattern that looks like this. I've been chipping away at it. It's a big one. It's uh, I don't have a stitch count here, but uh, it's going to be a big one. And I've been working here in this part of it. And so let me show you what I've got. Here's what it's looking like so far. So last time I think I had done here. So now I've added all that part to it. Probably like there, more like that. There's a really big, my first like really big motif is coming here. So I'm kind of excited to do that one. Just see what it'll look like. I'm using Bejeweled by Classic Color Works. It's like a green blue, greenish blue kind of color. It has a little bit of variegation. I think you can see some parts are lighter, some parts are darker. And this is on 18 count fog. Um, Picture this plus. I use a lot of, I've been using a lot of Picture This Plus and Color and Cotton. And I have some Mystic Fabrics I tried for the first time too. I'll show you some of those. That um, Forest of Sumatra, I was trying to 25-7 as well, along with my um, Modern Folk Embroidery Stitch Along. And that was the one I only made it for like a week. I did 20, actually I was, it, twenty with 25-7, you try to do 25 stitches in one sitting, right? At a time, a day, or 25 minutes. But we were we were making our way through Star Tra Star Trek Voyager, um, and so it was more like forty minutes or forty five minutes. Like I would use an episode to time, like when I switched projects. So a little more than twenty five minutes. All right, so I've got a whole string of restarts to show you. I just have so much more fabric now in my stash. I was, isn't it funny how we always feel like we have to rationalize like what we're doing. I have a lot more fabrics now in my stash. So I just like other color combos better. And I, I'm trying to, I'm figuring out what fabrics I like and don't like to stitch on. And I have some projects that I never go back to because I know I just don't enjoy them as much. So I'm, I'm, I love the patterns. So I'm trying to put them on different fabric and see how it works out. So this one is showing up awesome on camera. Um, it's Opening Gambit by Long Dog Samplers, and it's, like, compared to their usual patterns, it's a little bit smaller. Um, it was one of the ones that came out this summer, I think, or maybe sp spring or summer. It's a pattern from this year. And it's a chess-themed pattern, so you can already start to see the chess pieces. Like, you see one full chess piece here, um, here, and then you see the top of one here. And I'm using um, DMC 712, which is technically, it's like a cream color. It's showing up very white on here, but it's cream. And then this fabric, okay, it's a 36 count linen. And I thought it was Winter Wren by Fox. It's definitely Fox and Rabbit. And I thought it was Winter Wren because way back in March during Needlework Expo, um, I placed an order. I wasn't going into shops yet, but I placed an order with what I think is my local needle. What I mean, I've been to it, my local needle workshop inspired needle. And so I asked them to mail, you know, I shipped, had stuff shipped to me. And one of the things I purchased was a piece of winter wren by Fox and Rabbit. So I got a piece that looked just like this and it had a tag in it that said winter wren by Fox and Rabbit. And that's what I used, um, in my last video, my pride piece, my long metamorphosis pride piece, that was on that fabric. So I thought, okay, winter rent. So then I wanted to get another piece. Inspired Needle was out. So I um, ordered from Kitten Stitcher. And um, there was another fabric called Seaweed that also Fox and Rabbit, also beautiful. So I thought, okay, let me grab that too. Well, when I got my shipment from Kitten Stitcher, the winter wren was more of like a coffee color. And they had labeled this one as seaweed. And this is exactly the same fabric I used for my pride piece. So I think it's seaweed. Maybe it had just been like the tag had been labeled incorrectly on it. I'm still not 100% sure because even when I Google both colors, I'm not entirely sure what color is showing up. So end of, moral of the story, I mean, not moral story. The end, at the end of the story, I'm happy with this fabric. And I chose this darker, fa I wanted a darker fabric because I knew the white would be a good contrast, this cream color, and I'm so happy with it. This is another pattern that I put on Pattern Keeper, and it's really helping me track the stitches. It's got a lot of nice details, like um, this piece right here, this long chest piece here, 
it actually has some back stitching that's going to go in here. I just haven't done any of the back stitching yet. So there's more of like a decorative pattern inside there. It's not just blank. Although it looks cool even when it's blank. It's 36 count. I'm using two strands over two threads on that one. I'm enjoying that one a lot. It works up really quick. I mean, I switch projects out a lot. I only stitch on projects for like a couple nights or so, and then I get tired of them and then I want to do something else. So this is probably like three nights of stitching me. It's not that much. And so much of it is just that filled in part. Like you're doing the, it's more negative stitching. So those, once you know like how far you have to get, it's just quick, quick, quick. You can go through them real quick. That's going to be a good one. I, I like that. Okay, this is another restart. And it's, um, squirrel. you haven't seen this one in ages because I probably talked about this in my maybe third or fourth video. It's been a few months. Um, it's squirrels of Sumatra. I don't have dragons of Sumatra yet, but that's on my list too. But maybe I should just like finish one of these other ones first. So it's real cute. I love stitching squirrels. I don't know why. I look at squirrels a lot too. Like our old, we moved in, in May and our apartment, our old Chicago apartment, we lived up on the third floor and we had a really tall tree out front. And I used to just love like having a cup of coffee right there by the window and watching like what the squirrels were up to. And we don't have that many squirrels. And I, I, I saw one last week. <laughs> we don't have that many. I don't know why. I mean, we're just outside of Chicago. I don't know why they're all what you know probably the population all the trash I, I don't know anyway so here's what I've got so far let me fold it up a little smaller um and I, I think I'm liking <laughs> I'm still not 100% sure and I'll tell you why I am why am I doing this I'm just doing it I'm trying to use sulky. I have some sulky threads I bought over um, the holidays and they're still kind of kicking around and everybody just loves sulky threads. And I have not find, found like the perfect fabric to thread con combo yet. I think this is it though, because it, this is 18 count Ada, the color is mystic. And actually I'm the coverage is really good on that. There's no fabric point poking through and it doesn't feel too tight. Like when you're stitching patches, it doesn't feel too tight. So I think I can actually live with Sulky on 18 count Ada. I think that's what we're doing. I have another project too, where I, I'm trying it out in 18 count Ada and it's working okay. The thing with Sulky is that their variegated threads are just so beautiful. I mean, this is variegated. Um, I should know the color and I don't. It's a variegated like golden brown. It's an autumn something. I'll look it up. I'll put, maybe I'll link it down below. Or if you if I forget to link it, let me know and I'll share it in the comments. Um, yeah, I'm enjoying that. This was it was it stitched up real quick. I'd like to know um, if any of you use sulky threads. What kind of needles do you use for sulky? Because I really like bowen needles. And um, they're so skinny. It's hard to thread because the sulky threads are so much thicker. So I'm wondering if there's something with like a larger tip to them or something. I'm not, I'm not sure. Anyway, if you have any insight on that, feel free to share. Um, this was Ink Circles, Squirrels of Sumatra. On um, Mystic Blue, um, 18 Count Ada by Picture This Plus. Okay, next one is a restart too. And um, yeah, I'm loving how this looks. So this is, it's not going to look like it right now very much, but this is the bookcase by Galliana Designs. And um, it's part the hashtag, there's a stitch along. So Shiloh from Cross Stitch MD and Beth, who's the desert stitcher, who, by the way, I've been, she's one of, been one of my binges this month. I've been catching up on her videos I just love them. We we both stitch like kind of similar, like the long dog samplers and she's got some geometric patterns in there too. I just enjoy watching her videos. So um, that reminded me to pull out the bookcase and decide if I wanted to keep it the way I had been starting it or to restart it. So I went for a restart and I love it. So this is actually a vase of flowers that's on one of the shelves in the bookcase. And um, this right here is going to be like the wood panel that goes through the middle of the bookcase. So you see a little bit of wood panel and then a, the flower base. I love it. And um, it this is a color, a DMC color variations. It's called Meadow. Mm -hmm. 
I don't even want to guess on the co the code. It's it's obviously it's the four thousand range because it's DMC um, variegated. Um, but I know the color has the word meadow in it. If you look that up, it's like greens and blues and creams. Very pretty. And I wanted to do, I, I had seen that color at Michael's. I picked up a few kind of random DMC colors and I thought, oh, I would love just like my opening gambit by Long Dog Sampler. It's a dark fabric and a light color. I wanted to play around more with that. So color and cotton fabric. This color is called Onyx and it's so dreamy. I love it so much. You're not seeing it probably, but it's purple. It's a dark, dark 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 purple and um does it show any i mean she yeah you can kind of see see how it looks kind of purple it's a purpley gray but it's really more purple um and i'm i love it it's 20 count which is not what i usually stitch on i'm doing one strand and it's looking great i mean where have you been all my life 20 count i could do that i think stitch more on that and i had an interesting experience with this fabric um is I think it was Darcy Cameron, um, Stitch Man Darcy. He in one of his videos recently, he had been talking about how afraid he was uh, to wash his stitching. He does these like enormous full coverage, and that would kind of terrify me too. Like the years you've spent stitching it, and then you have to wash it. And he said it was fine in the end. It was great because it really did clean it up. Well, when I when this came when this fabric came, I just like took it out of the package and started stitching on it. Well, my fingers were catching some of the residual dye that was coming out of the, the cause it's a very, it took a lot of dye probably to get it this dark. Um, so I didn't panic. I just looked on color and cotton's website at their FAQs and, um, she's got a really good description there. She basically said, yeah, our, our colors are color fast, but on the dark fabrics, there is sometimes a little bit of dye that comes out just put it in the wash delicate cycle and it's going to be fine. And it, it was, and it was so cool to observe that because first of all, um, I didn't add any detergent or anything. I just put it delicate wash and, and washed it. Like I had stitched a whole part of this before it went in. So I was kind of nervous that like, if any dye came out during washing, that it would get into the threads that I had already stitched and that didn't happen. It was perfectly fine. And then when I did, continue stitching on it after the wash there was no dye left on my fingers so it took care the wash took care of it so um i have a newfound confidence in trying to wash um my fabrics at least my fabrics that have D that use dmc because this is a dmc i think i would be afraid to st depending on the floss definitely not silk i know but depending on the cotton floss i would be um concerned about whether or not flosses are color fast or not like if they would lose their color so anyway at least on dmc i know that it works now okay so that was what did i say that was the bookcase by galliana design i've been on a galliana kick i've been working on two of her patterns okay this one is a restart totally inspired by carly at veggie stitches because she's that you got to check her instagram i'll link it below she's she's zipping through this is the current year linens and threads mystery sampler it's called talavera and it's based on um pottery designs from mexico and spain and so it's um it basically looks kind of like a shelf with square tiles all over it talavera is um you can get pottery but you can also get tiles for like tiling your home um so that's what it's tile patterns and I, um, this was one of the projects that I had started originally on, do I, I don't have it. I have all my projects here. Like my, I just use plastic bags for my projects. I know that's not supposed to be great for some of your projects, but that's what I, I don't buy project bags. Um, so I have them all here in a stack. I just didn't want to flip through them right now, but my old start on this was on one of those witch -alt linens. That's very slippery and it was kind of like a bright blue aqua and it was really beautiful. It's, it is really beautiful, but it's very inconvenient to stitch on. So I switched it up to a, an Ada. This is 18 count spice. And I used basically the same colors I had been using. So I had um, a few shades of blue, a few shades of orange. I think I, in my other one, I had also used a little bit of like a pale yellow, but I, I didn't for this one. And then a, um, 
I think this is also DMC 712. I can't remember if it's 3865 or 712 for the white. So um, I started the middle part of like the shelf structure. And then I started one um, tile, actually two tiles, because I have a little bit of one tile here and then a little bit of one tile here. Um, so I'm enjoying that. There's I'm throwing in a little bit of everything. Like it's mostly DMC. This blue is the leftover Silks for You um, 075 from my blue velvet. So I put that in there. Um, this light orange, like here and here, that's a sulky. And it, this is 18 count Ada. It looks pretty okay. I didn't have any, you know, struggles with it. I, I guess that's the, maybe that is the fabric to be using sulky on. So uh, I'm enjoying this. I, I found a place to put in DMC 939, very dark navy blue. I've been looking for places to add that. So uh, yeah, I'm enjoying it. I think it looks pretty good. I like the colors and that'll be a fun one to return to. It's really easy. 18 count Ada is just super easy to stitch on. It's easier than linen, although 36 count linen is okay too. It's easy enough. Okay, um, I have two more works in progress, and then I have new starts to show you. So thanks for, some of you are like the long haulers. You stick around for my long videos. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, um, this one was my only, I mean, basically my only Jolly July slash Christmas in July stitching that I picked up just because I had so many other things. So this is the other Galliana. Um, Galliana Designs, and it's a Christmas sampler. And um, how far did I get? I just barely started this blue, this snowflake here, right here. This is going to be a round snowflake, so you're just seeing a quarter of it here, um, and it'll go all the way around. So I did like these little, I had done up to this book spine here, so then I added a few more I wanted to get, my goal was to get to the snowflake. Well, my goal was to finish the snowflake, but clearly I didn't do that. But at least I got to it. This is on 32 count platinum. And it's one over one. And I'm just using DMC. DMC colors. And I'm playing with the color. I don't usually play with colors. It slows me down because I have a hard time deciding what colors to put with other colors. Especially when I'm making up the color combos like that. But... Um, I think it looks fine. It's kind of like, uh, they're wintry, but not really Christmassy. Uh, but I kind of like the, um, different colors in there. So it's Galliana and it's the Christmas sampler. One over one on 32 count. Okay. We got one more whip, uh, work in progress. And that is this fantastic, transtastic sale. And um, this one, I had a little bit of a panic on because I'm constantly mismeasuring fabric and I just had a worry that I wouldn't be able to make it. So like this was everything that I did last month. I had a worry that it, it wouldn't have enough space at the other end. So I just tried to make my way across and yes, it's going to be fine. I'm cutting it close as I do, um, but it'll be fine. This motif here is not actually the farthest edge. It's going to go like two or three stitches more, but I still have room. It'll be okay. This fabric is so, so pretty, isn't it? Hang on. I want to show it so you can get the full effect of it. Are you seeing like the pinks and blues in it? Um, this is by Fiberlicious. It's called Sweet Tea. And this was the one I had emailed Fiberlicious to ask them what they recommend because I wanted to use a pink and a blue. Um, and I said it would be okay if it had, if it mixed and had purple in it. So this was the recommendation they had given me. It's 18 count Ada. And it's stitching up really nicely. So I'll keep going. This is a very satisfying stitch because each motif is just so bright. And then the cool part is that like you have a lot of these bits that are outlined and some of them just get filled in. So like if you spend some time counting out the outline, you're leading up to a day when you can just have like all these filled in part, like just do fill in stitch like here. See all these parts that get filled in and those parts are just really relaxing because you don't have to do any more of the counting. Like the counting is done and you just fill in it, fill it in. Very relaxing stitch. 
Okay, so I've got a whole bunch of new starts because that's just what I do. It's a year of yes. It's a floss tube year of yes. I'm starting everything. So let's just get into that. Okay. Do you recognize this one? Some of you are doing this, I think. This is by the fantastic Ana Aguayo, who goes by Peruvian Flair on Etsy. And this is the Tokapu um, Sal, the Tokapu Stitch Along. And I just love it so, so much. I just started this yesterday. And, um, okay, so Tokapu Sal, it's based on, you can check, I'll share Anna's Instagram page below and, and her Etsy shop. But if you look, she, her the inspiration for this, it's going to be tiles. So here's one tile and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there are nine tiles. And the inspiration is a textile, a pre-Columbian um, Peruvian textile that also had these kind of tile patterns on it. So she adapts, she does that a lot. She takes pre-Columbian patterns and adapts them to modern cross-stitch patterns. And they're just so beautiful. This one calls for, um, well, it calls for whatever you want. It's, she's got several different color combinations you can go with. I went with one that basically had like a, a red, a brown, a black and a white. So I started with the red and the brown, and then I'm waiting for black and white to fill in the black and white because I'm not sure what I want to use yet. So this red and this brown are that ruby slipper and burlap that were left over from um, my cherry, basket of cherries from Blackbird. So they're gentle art threads. And I just used, I'm trying to use them up. So I'm going to run out. I'm going to need to get some more because I'm almost... I'm down to, this is what I'm down to, like the last bits of it. So I'll get some more and then I'll figure out what, I want to get a nice variegated black and maybe a variegated, like a cream color to do the white and the black parts. This is a um, 28 count Perman linen. And it was in that same set of small linens, uh, nine by nine by nine inch by thirteen inch linens that I had gotten from Extra Designs called the Spirit of Autumn. That set, this blue was in that set too. The one that I, the green that I used for my owl, this is the same set of fabric. So loving that one. When I stitch on twenty eight count, I'm I mostly these days I've been stitching over two, and I've been using three strands, so it eats up a lot of thread. But I like the look of it too. It's very like the color of the thread is really showcased. Like look at on this center motif. You can really see the nice, a little bit of variegation in that red and that bright brown color, brown, like yellow, green, brown. So that was called the Tokapu um, pattern. It's a Tokapu cell. And like, if you haven't stitched a Peruvian flare pattern yet, what are you waiting for? I mean, she makes, Anna makes her patterns so unbelievably affordable. Like this one was on sale this week for $1.99 US. And it's such a joy. Like I, I'm enjoying that stitching so much. It's, it's a really good deal for patterns. And it's, um, if you're interested in indigenous cultures, like I am, it's a cool, it kind of takes you down a rabbit hole of reading about pre-Columbian textiles. We, my, um, my partner and I, Steve, We've traveled in South America some. We've been to our first trip together was Bolivia. And have I told you this before? I don't remember. But um, we very early in our relationship, we just we both love to travel. But we decided it would be a good like a good test of our relationship to see if we would survive a trip like a, a long trip together. Not a long trip, but a faraway trip. And we were at a bookstore and it was one of those things where Steve just like closed his eyes and picked. And that's where we're going. It's like, guess we're going to Bolivia. So it was one of the coolest places I've been to. I, um, I was here for two weeks and then Steve stayed another like a week, maybe two weeks. And um, we were in La Paz and we went to, there's a beautiful, it's in the Andes mountains and there's a beautiful lake there called Lake Titicaca. That's what it's called. And it's an enormous mountain lake and it's got, um, we were on the Bolivian side of it and there are islands in the lake and it's just one of the most like secluded and beautiful places I've ever been. Like it is my, my memory from there is the nighttime. You're in the middle of this mountain, like enormous, it's a great lake. So it's an enormous lake. And um, 
you just see, there's no city lights, right? Because barely anybody lives on this island. We were on Isla del Sol was the island. And there were just star like there were more stars than sky, if you can imagine that. That's what it felt like. Like you couldn't even see the the dark of the sky. All you could see is stars everywhere. It was so, so pretty. Um yeah. So we were when we were in Bolivia, we got to go to well. I got to go and Steve just came along with, but he's always very supportive of that. He's interested too. We went to an entire museum of textiles, pre-Columbian textiles. So it was awesome. We saw they had tons of cross stitch, tons of weaving, all kinds of cool stuff. We saw a similar thing. We've been to Chile too. Chile is an awesome country to visit. We were in um, Santiago, the capital, and they have a pre-Columbian history museum that has a lot of textiles in there too. Cool. Very cool. Chile, I would go back to in a second. It was so fun. It was a fun place to go. Um, okay, moving on. New start. So I have another two projects I started with my thread club flosses from Color and Cotton. And this one, I'm, I'm loving doing this. And I'm almost done. I really wanted to finish it. I was actually going to make my video. I was I, on my calendar. I have down recording this floss tube video first. I put it for Friday, this Friday, but then I have a meeting for work. We're, we're basically getting back to school stuff. So um, we don't start till the 11th, but like all my days are filled up with, I'm on a lot of committees and we're getting a lot of stuff going. So Friday I was going to do floss tube, but then I have a meeting Saturday morning. I was going to do it. Then I have a meeting. So I just thought like today, this afternoon was free. I thought I better just go ahead and do it. So I didn't get to finish this and I wanted to finish it to show you, but um, this pattern is um, one that I pieced together, but I didn't design it. So these star motifs are called, um, they're from DMC. It's a free pattern from D on DMC's website. And it's just called floral star. If you go to DMC and search for floral star, um, it's also in, in French fleur étoilée. Um, you can find that. And then um, the calligraphy is that same calligraphy font that I used on my um, The Hill We Climb. So it's either Lifted Spirit or Christy. I think it's Lifted Spirit Studio on Etsy. They do a lot of um, font cross stitch patterns. Um, so let me show you the whole thing again. So I, don't, I, I don't think I hold up my projects enough for you to get a good look at it. There we go. And it says Bon Hiver, um, which is not, a it means good winter in French. And it's not a thing that French people say, at least like I've been speaking French for almost my whole life now. And I've never heard a French person say it, but it's a phrase that's used on one of my all time favorite TV shows, Northern Exposure, which is, if you don't know it, it's an American TV show from the 1990s. And it's um, about a fictional, town, very small town in Alaska. And everybody who lives in the town has kind of these quirky personalities. And there's a doctor from New York who moves there. And it's about how he like handles living in this town. And there's a, an episode in season five called First Snow. And in this fictional town, when it, when it's the first day of snow, they wish each other bon hiver. It's a really good episode. There's a lot, well, there's lots that happens in all their episodes. It's very, they have a lot of very sweet moments, funny um, I would characterize it as like a feel good kind of show. Um, so anyway, I love that show so much. And so I, I wanted to, um, stitch something wintry because these were the thread club colors that came when I saw them together. They just kind of reminded me of a wintry thing. And then I found this dreamy color and cotton fabric, which is dark umber which when it arrived at the house, I thought, why, oh, why didn't I pick up like three more of them? Because I love this color so much now. I can only describe it. I don't know what you're seeing. You're seeing kind of a brownish color. It's got tones of, it's like a mauve. It's a pinky brown. And it's so beautiful. And look at how the, like these lighter colors just kind of pop on there. So... I'm, I'm so glad I do have, I bought a big enough piece where now I have a whole extra thing. So I'm definitely going to think about what I want to put on the rest of that. Um, yeah, but this is, this is very close to being done. The Bon Iver is stitched. Um, the only bit I have left is 
see this gray dial part in the middle of the flower? I have to finish that on this. And then in the very center, there's another little kind of motif that goes in the um, very center. So I just love it. These are colors that I would never choose myself, which is kind of what I like about the Thread Club. They're not meant to be coordinated colors, but sometimes you look at them and they just go together. So it's kind of fun to pick out what project you could do with those colors. Now I'm actually thinking of putting my thread club on hold with coloring cotton. I love their threads. I love their fabric. I love it. Like this is a, a celebration of col color and cotton basically because it's like their fabric and their thread together. Um, I love it, but I don't want, I, I get overwhelmed when I have too many threads that are just sitting there. I don't mind if it's fabric because I like to have choices of fabric, but I get something about having all that unused thread kind of overwhelms me. So I just got the most recent one and I don't have any project. I know it, does, it shouldn't bother me, right? Because it, it's okay to build up a stash, but it also kind of, it feels so excessive. That for some reason feels excessive, not like my million projects that I'm doing. So I may, there's an option when you subscribe to a thread club in your account, you can like postpone, you can um, cancel just one or you can cancel the whole thing permanently, or you can just um, like say that you don't want the next shipment. So I, I might do that. Of course, the threads that arrived were also beautiful. They, one of the, I, I should have brought them. I didn't bring them down here. One of the um, sets of five, I get the, the sets of 10, I get 10. So it comes in two sets of five. And one of them is the perfect colors for anything like hydrangea related. It's got a beautiful light purple, um, a beautiful blue, a beautiful green. Um, but I don't have anything like that. Owl Forest has a new hydrangea pattern now, but it didn't really speak to me. So I didn't really have anything in mind I wanted to do with those colors, but they are beautiful. I'll keep them aside. I don't know if you're seeing the blue tinge on this. Yeah, you're seeing it. See how it's kind of blue? Um, it's called Patagonia, and that's what I used for the lettering on this. I think it is kind of showing up blue. I wasn't sure if you were seeing the blue of it. It's a color I love, like, so pretty. And it looks so nice on this dark fabric. But um, like with other colors from the Thread Club, she doesn't always mass produce the thread club colors. So like this Patagonia, I couldn't find it again on the website. I don't know if she's making it or not. Maybe she'll have something that's similar. I'm not sure. So that's um, Bon Hiver. Okay. I started something new for um, Spooky Summer Stitch. Which is um, the hashtag that turned into a stitch along by um, Chris at Chris Cross Stitch. And um, so I started Silhouettes, which I think is like super cute. Look at these face. I mean, like I showed you in this last, look at this vampire, look at his face. I just love it. And there's some pretty, like this dancing pumpkin. And then I don't know, there's some cute stuff in there. I'm on the Halloween train. I, I haven't started. A, no, I, I can't even say it. I have like a bunch of autumn stitches I'm about to show you. I love autumn. I just never really been on a Halloween kick, but now like I'm finding stuff that I want to stitch. So I got this from Abby Top Knot, And then she had a sale on just a few colors of Gloriana um, silk floss. So I got a couple of those and that's what I'm using to stitch this. So I just started the top of it. Basically you can barely, you could tell that there's a pumpkin. There's part of a witch and a lantern. There's a moon. There's an eye. Um, and I am almost like, it only goes to like right here. So the end of the pattern is going to be right here. So it's not that big. This is on, uh, is it? It's 14 count Ada. And this color is called Cantaloupe by Color and Cotton. And I love it so much, as, as I do with all their colors. Um, you can kind of see, it's like a yellow and orange variegated fabric. And I don't know why, I don't normally buy, oh, I know why. I bought a 14 count. I was about to say, I don't really stitch on 14 count that much, but I did pick it up because that's all she had at Color and Cotton. And I was looking for orange. And then of course my thread club came and that was orange. So I should have just waited. Um, but you don't always know what color you're getting. So 
This Gloriana silk, the color is charcoal, and it's a really nice variegated, um, variegated like black and gray. I would use it for my Tokapu sampler, but I don't, I want to use something that's a little bit less expensive because the Glorianas are a splurge because it's silk. So like a Quaker, I think is a good pattern for silk because you're not, you're not stitching a whole lot of full coverage on it. A little bits here and there, but um, like with just a few skeins, you could do it, you know, a couple of skeins. Okay. Um, this one. <laughs> Can you tell that it looks like the front of a bicycle? So this is a freebie bicycle pattern. I Clearly, I haven't finished it yet. It's by um, Brigitte Dado. She's a French designer. And I will link her the link to this below. And you can check out some of her other things, too. And this was just another pattern. I'm doing a tribute to women cycling. Um, kind of um, sparked by... No, not kind of. I'm definitely sparked by the women's... Tour de France that's happening next year, um, but also by something else I'm about to show you. So um, I'm going to do a, a bicycle. These were, this is another project with the color and cotton monthly threads. So this blue, Admiral blue came and then this Amaryllis came. So I'm gonna finish this bike with blue. I'm using, I was thinking kind of French colors because it's sort of tour inspired. And then I have a quote from a fantastic book, which I wanna show you. Did I bring it? Yeah, I did. So I picked up this book. It's uh, Le Guide du Vélo au Féminin. And it's um, Avocicle, it says there. And it's by Louise Roussel. She's a French woman. She is not a professional cyclist, but she's a cycling enthusiast. And she just, um, she loves cycling kind of long distance just for fun, cycling from like city to city. And in doing that as a female adult in France, she experienced condescending comments from men. There's still sexism. I mean, there's sexism in, athlet in athletics anyway, right? Even if you're not a pro. And so she put together her experiences and wrote a book about it. And um, the goal is to try to empower women to find like freedom and liberty through cycling. So it's part guide. Um, and it's also, it talks about her experiences cycling, but it also is, um, it includes these interviews with other women in France who are cyclists, some professional, some not. And it's just really inspiring. <laughs> it's a really good read and it's really inspiring. And I want to show you a cool thing. One of the women who she interviews is Masoma. Um, Masoma, can I find her whole name? Hold on. I think it's Mas. I don't want to misquote her name. Darn it. I should have written it down. I want to say it's Masoma Ali Zida, or it could be Masoma Zida Ali. I'm, mis I'm mixing up her second and her third name. Um, but she's actually a, a cyclist from Afghanistan, and she lives and trains in France now as a refugee. And she started cycling when she was in school, and there was a French, um, there is a French TV channel named Arte, Art, and... Um, they did a profile on her being like a young female cyclist in Afghanistan. I think what she says here is that in Afghan society, I guess um, women in athletics are still kind of frowned upon. I think that's the impression she gives here. Um, she says it was a pro her doing cycling. It was a problem in Afghan society. That's what she's c'était un problème. So um, she had it that um, I can't remember how it was. She she was able to come to France. I think probably through that TV channel that did a special on women cyclists in um, Afghanistan, in Kabul. And she made connections and she was able to come over as a refugee. So she trains now. And the very cool thing is that we just saw her on TV last night because they had the women's um, time trial cycling competition. And she is a member of the Olympic refugee team. So she cycled as part of that. So it was so cool. And like to give you an example of some of the inspiring ideas in this book, there's a part where she talks about how like no matter where she is, whether she's in Afghanistan or whether she's in France, she's stared at and she's looked like people are looking at her like she's a curiosity. And if when it's when she's in Afghanistan, it's because she's wearing athletic clothing. It's a little bit more fitting and she's a woman doing sports. 
when it's when she's in France, it's because she wears a head covering underneath her helmet. And that's why she's being looked at. So she was just talking about like, how awesome would it be if just more women, more Muslim women in both places would just cycle? Because then it would normalize women in sports in Afghanistan and it would normalize women in headdress, headscarves, doing things in France too. So um, I just love, yeah, I've been reading a lot in this and it's really interesting. And I, I love, this is Louise Roussel right here. She's on the cover. I don't think it's been translated to English yet, but if I, if I see that it has been, I'll let you know. I'm enjoy it. But for our, my French speaking friends out there, you're, you might enjoy that one. Anyway, so um, why do I bring her up? Because next to this bicycle, I'm going to be quoting her. So I have, um, what did I pick out? I should have bookmarked it. It's something like, Pour que chacune puisse de découvrir combien le vélo change la vie. I think it's something like that. Like, may every woman discover how life-changing cycling can be. I think that's what it was. Um, so that's going to go in red. So that's that one. I don't really have a name for this because I'm just kind of piecing stuff together and making it up. Okay. Are you all, I mentioned last month that I had a little bit of a June shopping binge when I broke my no new haul. And of course I ordered a couple things from Al Forest. And so I started one of the things I picked up. This was one I've been wanting for a long time. This is called Russian Alphabet. And it's the, no, it's called, that's not what it's called. It's called Spring Alphabet, but it's the Russian version. So there's also a Spring Alphabet with like the Latin, like the English alphabet on it. And I'm using the called for Owl Forest threads, which are so dreamy variegated. And so I've got a few letters stitched. I've got a bird and a few letters. I've got D, D, Y, Y, J stitched. Look at the, um. Are you seeing the, I don't know if I can get, get you to see it. Like the variegation on those little berries, how it's kind of peachy, kind of light green. So pretty. And then this, um, did I stitch anything in turquoise? Oh yeah, these flowers. Their threads are, even this, this leaf here, see that variegation on that? I love it. It's so pretty. So, um, yeah, spring alphabet. I started it. And it's working up fast. It's 18 count Ada. This is, I think it's Cobblestone by Fiberlicious. So it's like a gray, it's basically a gray, but it has like bits of brown in it. So all those light colors kind of pop nicely on that. So I'm loving that one. It's working up fast. I'll definitely do some more with that one. Okay, moving right along. <laughs> Everybody's still with me. I've got um, hang on, one, two. I've got three more new starts to show you. Okay, this one I'm really excited about, and it was totally unexpected. So this is Autumn Quaker Seasons, and it's by Remembering Bygone Stitches. And I feel silly sometimes sharing information because I think a lot of you know this already, but maybe if there are new stitchers out there, you won't know this. So there was a stitching um, shop. I'm pretty sure, in a group called Stitching Pretty. And one of the members of that group passed away. And so after that, they started re-releasing some of their patterns as kind of a tribute to this, the what their member who had who had gone. So this is one of the re-releases. And they re-release them under the name Remembering Bygone Stitches. And so it's really sweet. When you get one of their patterns, it has like a little description of their story on there. And this one um was re it arrived to me in a really fun way because what back in march when i had um placed that um shipment order from inspired needle my local needle workshop i was just poking around on their website because it's the first time i had ordered from them and they do this thing that's a grab bag it's like a um, patterns grab bag and um, i picked the quaker grab bag when you check it different time, each time you check, they have different ones. So like they've had a winter grab bag, um, sampler grab bag, um, snowflake, sweet treats. It's 25 U US dollars, 25 bucks. And they basically go around the store and they pick out like six or seven patterns. I can't remember how many I should have counted about before I 
at least six, between six and eight patterns fitting that theme. And then for me, I wasn't in the shop, so they mailed them to me. But it was just about the coolest thing. Because like, for example, this pattern on their sticker tag, it was listed for like 12 bucks. So that was already half the price of the grab bag. And then they sent me five more, at least five more patterns more than that. And they were all different sizes. A couple of them were really big. Like one is an enormous bell pull that's a Quaker. I got a teeny tiny Quaker thing. I got all sorts. So this came as part of that. And I had just kept it in my stash. I didn't really know, like, I didn't have an inkling for what to do with it or anything. But I have, like, my next three things I have are all, I've been on an autumn kick a little bit. So I pulled it out for that. So let me show you what I did with it what I am doing with it because it's nowhere near done. It's just basically started. Oh, I didn't write down what this fabric was. I'm gonna have to remember. Check this. Aren't you just in love with it like I am? <laughs> it's so pretty. I, I'm pretty sure this is Witch's Brew from x -Ju. It Let's just say it's definitely x -Ju design and it's one of their like witchy, Halloween-y kind of things. I think it's Witch's Brew. And the threads are all, I just picked out a kind of random sampling of Threadworks colors. Just ones that had autumn colors in them. Greens, reds, oranges, yellows. And it's a Quaker, so it's just full of, like, it's got all these separate motifs, right? So I'll just stitch different motifs to different colors. I just love it. It's looking so good. Like I started by putting in the word autumn. I'm missing the A, obviously, but I started here and I thought, oh my gosh, that orange actually looks really good on this fabric. Um, and then you bring in like this teal and did I write down any of the colors? I started to and then I forgot. I'm sorry, you all. One of these colors is 10244. I think it's that teal. Threadworks. Okay, Threadworks technically has names. For their colors, but they're only listed in shops with the name. The actual packaging of like a skein of Threadworks only has a number on it. So one of them is 10244. I think it's that. And then I think this bright orange is 1077. I think that's what it is. Let me know in the comments if you are curious about any of these colors. Let me know and I can look them up and share what color it is. I just forgot. I forgot. My notes are incomplete because I, I was unprepared for today. Anyway, um, that was Quaker Autumn by Remembering Bygone Stitches. So I'm going to continue on this autumn kick here. I've, I've been like thinking a lot about fall. I love fall colors. I love all the like warm oranges and yellows. I've been, I won't spend too much time on it because I know this is more for, most of you are stitch cross stitchers, but I started a cowl in this. It's, called, it's from one of my favorite knitting, um, no, yarn dyers called Treehouse Knits. And they do a color called Rosewood. And it's just all these oranges and corals and browns. So I started a, I started an autumn cowl. So I've just been starting everything autumn. Okay, so this one is another one just like autumn. Um, what did I just share? Autumn Quaker. That was in my stash. A pattern was in my stash. This pattern has also been sitting in my stash. Um, so I think, no, I have a, well, I don't remember. So this is Autumn Dream and it's, um, by the Cottage Garden, Car Cottage Garden Samplings. And it's part of their Songbirds Garden series. I think I just got this one, but I have other. So I've been kind of stockpiling these, the Songbirds Garden series patterns because they have so many that I like. Like the one that came out for Needlework Expo is called Beezy Spring. And it's got this beautiful like beehive pattern. There's one, um, is it Sing for Joy maybe? And it's got um, purple cone flowers on it, which are so cool because that's a prairie flower. Like we see them all over Illinois here. Um, yeah, I love, there's that Peace on Earth is one of them. And it's actually, I might be, these might be two different series by Cottage Garden. Anyway. There's a whole bunch of patterns by Cottage Garden Samplings that have basically plants and a bird. Combos of like a flower and a bird. So um, this one, um, Tufted Titmouse is the bird. And Bittersweet is the plant. 
And of course, check that little pumpkin house. Just about the cutest thing around. So of course I couldn't say no to this one. And if you want to see a finished version of this one, you got to check out my other binge from this month. Floss tube binge has been Debbie at um, Mama Bear Stitchery. And I just like, I'm watching her channel like that. I'm just glued. She does so many cool projects. She does like amazing full coverage projects. Like she showed a video. I've been watching old ones too. So I don't remember which one it was. One of her full coverage projects, she does stitch a lot of animals, not only bears. She stitches a lot of animals, but she does stitch bears. She has this beautiful full coverage piece of a grizzly bear. It's like one of the most beautiful stitched projects I've seen, like full coverage pieces I've seen. It's so, so pretty. She had one where she showed the framed one. Anyway, she's doing this one and it. she finished it, I think, and it's really pretty too. Um, okay, let me show you this one already. Dream. I got a little bit of the bird. A little bit of like the wreath that's coming around that's up here. And then the dream, the word. And this is another just like Transtastic style. This is also has these like little bits that you do the outline and then you have all this fill in to do. So it's if you can count the out like down here, see I've counted the outline. And um, yeah, that'll be easy to fill in later on. So just using the called for DMC colors on that one. This is like DMC 310 right in here. This is 18 count. Um, it's one of my very first mystic fabrics. I got it from Garon's shop, Garon Stitchery. And the color is called Please Scream Inside My Heart which um, there's a really interesting, if you, in my last video, I was talking about Little Stab Studios, who's a stitcher in Japan, and they have a really cool blog about Japanese culture. And there's a story behind that phrase, please scream inside my heart. And that's on um, the Little Stab Studios blog. Anyway, that's the color. It's kind of like a pink. Do you see how it's pink and mottled? So it looks kind of dreamy. So I thought it would be, it has sort of a dreamy quality to it. So that's what I did with that one. One more to go. And this one I've put on Instagram recently, so you might have seen it. Okay. Don't you just love it? This is the new monochromatic pattern by Owl Forest, and it's called Acorns. It might be called oak leaves and acorns. It's definitely called acorn. It's got acorns in the title. And um, I just love it so much. I'm using an 18 count Ada. This color is called Jade. It's like a mint green kind of color. And then the um, thread I'm using is one of the same threads from my Autumn Quaker. It's a Threadworks. I wrote down what number this was. 11215. It's called Marooned. And I just love it. It's very, you know what it is? It's like DMC 4000, which is gray and brown variegated, but it also throws in red. So it's basically just like that. It's got taupe, gray, and then like a reddish color. I went with a light fabric and darker thread on this one. So I'm loving it. This stitched up quick. This is just, I want to say like maybe three nights of stitching. It's barely anything. It works up fast. The thread I'm using, like I don't really pay too much attention to where, what colors are going where or anything like that. I just stitch with it. And um, yeah, I'm enjoying that one. That Threadworks color marooned, that sent me down a rabbit hole of research because, okay, so there's the word maroon there's the color maroon and then there's the verb like to be marooned on an island and i was pretty sure i had read somewhere that that use of the word like the verb was somehow like a european word to describe people of color um like in the caribbean like during the slave trade and everything and it was it was it was a 
um, not the co not the color, but the, the the act of being marooned. It part of it comes from. Let me see if I can get it right. It was like used to describe um, people, indigenous people, but also um, people of African descent who fled their slaved enslavement. Um, but there's a really cool video uh, from BET, which is Black Entertainment, I think, um, on YouTube. And I'll link that one below. But it's a really cool thing on, like, the the pe these people who... Um, who left and escaped actually organized and um, for like organized rebellions and stuff to fight back against their enslavers. And um, they called themselves at that point, they called themselves Maroons, I think, or maybe they were still called Maroons by Europeans. Anyway, the point is I'm not really sure where we, where we stand on that word anymore, but it's really cool to read about those rebellions and stuff that happened. So I'll, I'll link that video below. Whew, I'm all talked out. I've said it all, I think. Um, I'm going to, my plans, I'm going to keep stitching. School starts up. I'm busy with school. So um, it'll come to like a screeching halt, all my stitching. And I just will try to squeeze in stitching wherever I can. I'd love to finish something. Maybe that Bon Iver piece, I could try to finish that. Um, keep stitching, keep reading. I'm thinking about signing up but I don't know. It's so hard to plan for anything during the school year because it just takes up all my time. The um, Tetris and Tea, that's the website I've mentioned before for Tetris Palestinian cross stitch. Um, Wafa Gnayem, who runs that um, kind of school and shop and that organization, she's doing a really cool thing. She's doing a whole course. Well, it's like a lecture series on the history of um, Palestinian embroidery also told through art. So she's going to be talking, having like modules where she talks about Palestinian embroidery, but then she also will be looking at how Palestinian embroidery, embroidery has been shown in like paintings and stuff throughout history and connecting that with, um, you know, like what's going on in terms of land there, land use there and I feel like I don't have a very good understanding of the Middle East in general. So I feel like that would be a good thing for me to do. It's a little bit on the pricey side. It's a couple hundred dollars, which here it's kind of like the cost of a, like a community college course. I would like to do it. I'm just not, I'm, I'm thinking about it. I would like to be supportive to that organization. And I, I'm genuinely curious about it. And you can access the video lectures for a few months after you sign up. And she's also got, I mean, I wouldn't need to, I don't think I, I should be taking advantage of this, but you know, she's got it like a sliding scale and like payment plans and stuff like that for people who are really interested, but don't think they can afford it. Um, so that's something I'm kind of mulling over too. So I may, I may or may not do that one. I'm not sure. Um, anything else? No, I think that's it. I got it all. <laughs> I've had so much stitching this year. So thank you for sitting through it. Thank you for putting up with me. I love hearing from you. Will you, I, I just love reading your comments and love reading what you're doing with your stitching and what you think about different fabrics and threads, patterns, and, um, you know, if any of you are, you know, are stitching the same, some of the same stuff I'm stitching, I'd love to hear about that. I see some of you on Instagram, so I, I know I connect with you there, but I love to hear through your comments too. Um, so thank you for those. Thank you for con continuing to tune back in and listen. And I'm going to try to see you again in a month and we'll see what happens then between now and then. Thanks so much, everyone. Hope you're having a good day.